live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Hi, we're back to wrap up day one of the HP Big Data Conference, HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Big Data Conference. Hashtag seize the data. Uh, uh, Paul Gillen, this was a um, good introduction for you to Vertica and the Vertica community. It's, you know, you're going to have to digest it, but I mean, essentially you've got, you know, the traditional enterprise data warehouse, then you got the big sucking sound called Hadoop, you know, taken away, <laughs> sort of people used to joke the ROI on on, 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 you know, Hadoop is a, re, a reduction of investment, and that's a lot of what happened. Vertica kind of sits in the middle and has been able to sort of skate above that, that fray, despite the fact that it being very competitive, Amazon Redshift, and you got Teradata and Oracle and Greenplum and Natiz and all this stuff in there, but Vertica has been able to, to survive and thrive despite that big sucking sound. Um, not that it's not still competitive, it is very, very much so. Uh, we definitely saw our, you know, more discussion about, about uh, use cases beyond just pure retail, um, and which is great, good, good positive sign, and we're seeing the evolution of the platform, Vertica 8. Um, we're going to hear more tomorrow about Haven and Autonomy, Haven on Demand, which is the cloud product which combines all these capabilities and delivers them up through services. Uh, Robert Youngjohn's tomorrow is going to talk more about that, but but today, you know, was frankly more of the same with HPE Vertica. It's execution, good stories, uh, good use cases, and um, and um, looking forward to tomorrow. I think what I, what I take away with with HPE in general is it's a company that that is is strong on uh, you know just just executing well. They have a strategy. They they execute on it well. A uh, very well engineered product. Obviously, its customers are are fav very favorable. We had uh, a couple of security companies here today. We had a, a company that does uniform management and, and cleaning. Uh, we had a company doing doing uh, advanced uh, machine intelligence based stock trading. Really, kind of all over the map. Uh, so I got the sense that Vertica is is, uh, is a versatile. Uh, tool that its its customers find a lot of different uh, applications for it. Uh, certainly, that's something that we um, that we heard from um, uh, from Colin when uh, when he was on earlier. Um, the question that I have though is I, I don't get a sense that there's anything breakout here. I don't see a I don't see new markets emerging. I don't see a lot of excitement. I see a lot of of interest and and loyalty. But uh, I, I almost wonder if Vertica was owned by somebody el if, if somebody else, if they would be doing more with it to to really create a market leader. Well, there's some other examples, right? So you, you get, look at the teaser inside of IBM. I mean, it's kind of a similar story, right? Yeah, so very much. Um, I think, and I think, frankly, I think the acquisition was a much a hedge on Oracle uh, for for H HP at the time HP now HPE but also an opportunity to get into the big data space and you know so it was a growth area it was a software asset that they felt they could help you know uh, bring in to shore up uh, the software business that Leo Apotech at the time was trying to go harder <clears throat> into software it was it was pre autonomy all right that was their big big play which didn't pan out the way they had they had hoped um, <clears throat> but so in a, in a large sense, you're, you're right on the one hand that it's kind of not breakout. I'm not sure it would be different inside another company. As I say, there's other examples with Natiza. I don't feel like Natiza's breakout, it's solid. Uh, Aster data and Teradata. It's again, it's a, it's a hedge against the big sucking sound because you can at least add value in between the EDW and the, the Hadoop open source by focusing on those workloads that are going to yield performance with an MPP architecture. And that's why you saw initially a lot of retail, a lot of improving the existing businesses. And you know, you're seeing, you know, scratching the surface and maybe even deeper than that in some, some new areas. But it's not one of those transformative, disruptive breakout areas. Uh, yeah, and 
to your point, maybe we don't need the, more of that right now. I mean, we've come yeah. through a, a period of the last couple of years where it seemed like everything had to be transformative and disruptive, and we're seeing some uh, some fallout from that now, some disappointment in the Hadoop market with the, the lack of really coherent business models there. Uh, you know, maybe the future does belong, at least the, the near-term future, belongs more to companies, technologies like Vertica, which deliver clear value, which have good, sustainable, loyal customer bases, uh, which aren't trying to break the mold, but which are delivering very well on what we know does deliver value. Well, a good question would be, and I don't know the answer to this, it'd be a good question for Colin or, or Stonebreaker, would, it would be if, if systems like Vertica, column, column stores and MPP were available when the you know, sort of enterprise data warehouse started to take off, would it have had a bigger foothold? Um, because it feels like, as you're saying, this is sort of, how do we make the data warehouse better? Um, and, and, but there's so much infrastructure built up in the enterprise data warehouse, so many processes and, and it's just wired to the business, you can't just rip it and replace it. And so maybe over time it'll sift more off, or maybe the workload is such that you still need that EDW. I mean, EDW's not going away. It doesn't show, uh, show any signs of going away. Certainly it's not a, a high growth market right now, and Teradata is, is struggling to uh, to position itself uh, in the big data world, but uh, certainly organizations are not abandoning them. But as you point out, her vertical's position seems to be more of adding value to the enterprise data warehouse, uh, incorporating uh, some of the newer elements uh, from the Hadoop ecosystem, and, and merging those two together. It's certainly not a bad position. I mean, it was a relatively small acquisition. I think it was a $320 million acquisition at the time, which is not, I mean, HPE just paid $275 million for, uh, for SGI. So, I mean, that's, that's true. These are relatively small acquisitions in this day of $67 billion you know, acquisitions, Dell buying EMC. So, so I, 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 I don't know what the IRR was on that, but I would suspect that, um, that HP's made money on, on Vertica, but, but it definitely has not been, been transformative. I think the other thing we're seeing is the analytics business and the security business are coming together, mm -hmm. and that's, if I think about the future of HPE's security business, or frankly anybody's security business, I think analytics is a fundamental component of that. That's and, a, and, and a competitive business though. Cisco's, Cisco's big in on security now, IBM making big commitments to security, and then you've got the, the traditional companies, the Trend Micros and the, the Symantec's that are out there, so uh, I'm not sure that security is a, is a market that anyone's going to be making a lot of money on in the, in the near future simply because it is so fragmented. Well, Trend, trend Micro, Trend Micro purchased Tipping Point, which was an HP asset, uh, <laughs> you know, recently. So, you know, a lot of shuffling of the deck. I think HP was trying to clean up, HPE trying to clean up its portfolio a little bit and get more focused. But regardless as to um, the the outcome, it's clear that analytics and security are coming together. And 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 it was interesting to hear one of our guests talk about how the the defenders were going to get a leg up because of machine learning and AI. We'll see. I mean, we've been hoping for that for a long, long time. Every January you look back and say, okay, we're more or less secure, and we've spent more, and we're less secure every year. Now, part of that is the threat matrix and the growth of data, et cetera, et cetera, but clearly the, the bad guys are outpacing the good guys in terms of you know, our ability to thwart penetration. We've kind of lost that battle is what I'm hearing. Um, now it's about how do we respond. So re the responses are going to require analytics. Now, whether or not people can make a ton of money off of them, you know, uh, we'll see. The big guys, you know, IBM, HPE, at least for now, in, in that business, see what happens. Um, you know, EMC with RSA, uh, and then a zillion sort of startups, right? Uh, yeah, and as you mentioned, it, Cisco it, and Microsoft and, and others. Right, and, and as our uh, one of our, our uh, guests, I think it was, maybe it was Brendan, I, I don't remember, if, uh, on the security front, was talking about how the analytics edge, analytics could be an edge for, for users uh, that really the bad guys can't duplicate because we do have cloud, we do have these very high-powered uh, analytical engines. It's going to take a long time for the, uh, the attackers to, to duplicate that. And at least in the short term, we have some uh, uh, a lead on them in, in one area. Hard Tomorrow, to believe with IoT that, that the problem's going to get get any better. Oh my God, that right. uh, sounds like a security uh, <laughs> disaster waiting to happen, doesn't it? Right. When, when my 15-year-old thermostat, uh, someone hacks into my 15-year-old thermostat, <laughs> which the company that made, made it has been acquired five times in that time, nobody's supporting it anymore, who knows? <laughs> right. 
Okay, so we're looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, Robert Young Johns will be here as the as the keynote speaker. We'll have him on. He is the grand poobah of and Chris Sellen, the VP of Business software. Development for HP HP Big Data. Chris is a smart guy. He's been around the CRM industry a long time. Knows a lot about about how to put big data to use. He should be a good interview. Yeah, too. long time you know Cube guest. More practitioners, more technologists, you know, more Cube action. So uh, uh, hashtag is is uh, seize the data. Uh, you can you can tweet us um, at Divalante. He's at P. Gillen, G-I-L-L-I-N. Uh, let's see, we've got live programming going on right now out at uh, VMworld 2016. John Furrier and Stu Miniman and the teams are out there. We've got two sets out in Vegas, so you know, tune in to siliconangle.tv. Check that out. Check out wikibon.com for all the research. Check out siliconangle.com for all the news of the day. That's a wrap for today. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. <laughs>